I've recently ordered myself some C60. It didn't arrive for the last time I was in Canada. But for those of the Bear family that don't know much ab about what this is, do you want to give us an introduction to what Carbon 60 is and, and some of the experiments that you've sure. seen around it? Um, okay, so uh, carbon C60 is the carbon molecule uh, expressed a particular way. Usually you see carbon and it's in the form of carbon 12, carbon, carbon 14, carbon 18, and so on. And we're all uh, somewhat familiar, at least um, uh, nominally, with the idea of carbon 14 dating and stuff. And, uh, and so that, that has to do with the decay rate of carbon and how you can calculate it. And so you can tell how old something is if it was a carbon-based life form. Now, carbon is very interesting because you can, you can take 60 of the carbon atoms and make a carbon molecule. And so in that sense, it's monomolecular. It's a mono, a single atom that's in, its, in a molecular state. So instead of like carbon dioxide, that would be carbon with oxygen, and that would form a molecule. Here we've got carbon 60 that's nothing but carbon. And it's enough of these molecules, enough of the carbon atoms, that it forms this particular shape. And we can think of that shape, I'm doing it very poorly with my fingers, but we could think of that shape as a, a wire frame uh, rendition of a soccer ball. Okay, no deck okay you know, the little, yeah, you know, but the little grid line specifically, right? That's so we think of all the big white spaces in the soccer ball as being gone and you're left with just the grid lines. And if you thought of, and if we can think of carbon 60 that way, carbon has a lot of different molecular forms. There's carbon 50, there's carbon 52, there's carbon 70, there's carbon 71, and so on. Turns out carbon 60 is very unique because it closes that, that shape up, and yet the holes in between the, the um, wire frame are large enough that hydrogen atoms can go through. In addition to that, each one of the little points, each one of the intersections of the, of the grid forms up a little spiky bit, so to speak. And it also can have many hydrogen atoms attached to it. The upshot of this is that here is a material that you're mostly made out of, okay? Your body is mostly carbon and silicon. And, um, and so uh, it, it's the same as your molecular material. You can digest it. You can um, break it down. Your body can use it. It doesn't really break it down. It, it does excrete it. But it has no harm to you whatsoever taken in an appropriate fashion. And it has a huge benefit because with once it gloms onto the hydrogen atoms in your body, it is a super, super, super antioxidant. And it works at a level that other antioxidants don't. Because it is carbon, it can pass through cellular membranes and pass the, the brain blood barrier. Whereas uh, bigger molecules that are also antioxidants like vitamin C can't do this in the same way. And so carbon-60 can actually cluster around the mitochondria of your cells. And they, uh, when they're doing so, they have all the little spiky bits that have the hydrogen out there. The hydrogen gloms on to oxygen. And thus, instantly, your, uh, your uh, oxidative stress damage to your body, the creation of what is known as free radicals, st starts reducing. Okay, free radicals degrade our telomeres. Free radicals degrade our body and cause us to not replicate the cells as cleanly as before. It's like making copies on a, on a scanner where the toner is running out and each copier becomes more and more blurred as you go along. C60 wraps around the core of the cell and picks up all of the oxygen damage, gloms onto it with the hydrogen until it's completely full of it, and then you excrete the C60 with all of those toxins. And so it's 172 times more potent than vitamin C as an antioxidant. And vitamin C is one of the most potent antioxidants we've ever found on this planet. And so this is like a super antioxidant. Plus, it has other interesting features if you combine it with other materials that will even boost that further to the point where sometimes you can say it's 500 times more effective than vitamin C. So the upshot is that the experiments, and they've now done experiments on groups of up to 180 rats, and now bear in mind, rats don't have telomeres. Telomeres are what tell our cell how many times it can replicate before it's got to stop. Every time you replicate, it shortens the telomere down a little tiny bit until finally it gets to the point where it's too short, and that cell can't replicate anymore, and it's got to be kicked out. Um, rats, rats don't have telomeres. Rats could live forever, theoretically, except for the environmental damage that they encounter. We have a, have a, a, a pull-by date. 
which is basically how long our telomeres are. When the telomeres run down, you're done. Universe has had it with you. But with, um, uh, turns out C60 can keep rats alive a really, really long time because it removes the uh, damage from the oxidative stress from all of their cells, from their brains, their livers, from their guts, everywhere. They're just made uh, tremendously better by this. And so in that sense, it's very much the um, fountain of youth uh, for rats. For us, it also offers a benefit. Not only do, do we get that benefit in our six-foot rat of scrubbing out all of the toxins and, and sort of being a fountain of youth, but there's indications now that the C60 and what it does uh, can actually cause telomeres to regain some of their abilities. We don't know for sure that it's lengthening, but it sure looks that way at this point with the early results. And of course, it would lengthen back to what it should have been in the beginning. Um, there's no downside to the C60. It doesn't cause cancer. It can interfere with other with drugs you're taking if you took a, a particular kind of a drug or chemical, an allopathic chemical and you took C60 at the same time, the C60 may be neutralized or it may neutralize that particular substance just because of its ability to pull stuff in that is related, that, that is attracted by the um, uh, atomic charge on the C60 and then also subsequently on the hydrogen. Uh, so a very interesting uh, product indeed. Now the really cool part is on the studies, it has doubled and tripled lifespan of test rats. And so uh, th this is usually the rats die at two years, and they've had rats go now working into their sixth year on a study. Wow. And so, uh, it, so it would be a tripling of, of the lifespan, and these rats are not just simply living longer and degrading. They're not degrading and living longer. And so the idea would be that as, as our experimental six-foot rat might live you know, 200 years and be as fit at age 190 into 200 as you were at age 80, as you were at age 40, should you not let yourself go to waste by, you know, eating tons of chocolate or whatever, right? <laughs> so it, it's really cool stuff. C60 is um, uh, being uh, uh, touted by a lot of different people, but it's, it's and some of them are, are not really understanding how it functions and things. However, the rising emotional buzz around this stuff means a lot more very serious scientists are getting involved in the in the creation of the stuff, the use of it, the testing. There's companies that are making money off of it. They're starting to pay for more testing. They're starting to combine the C60 with other materials uh, to create uh, even more effect out of the C60. So it's the beginning of an anti-aging industry uh, breaking out at a grassroots level as opposed to the uh, quite actual um, uh, royal aristocracy level where they drink blood and bathe in blood and, and try and do all of these very weird things to lengthen their lives. Uh, here we're going to see a ground up, um, replacement for that whole system, that whole ideas, uh, based on, and it'll be based around drinking, uh, these C60 molecules in some form. And these guys are also called, uh, Buckminster Fullerenes. It was named in honor of, uh, uh Buckminster Fuller. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some going to undoubtedly end up being some um, companies that don't do good jobs, so you'd be getting less effective kind of stuff. But basically what you need is a saturated oil uh, that you can you can drink. So uh, edible oil, olive oil, sunflower oil, uh, you know, even soy oil, as much as I would hate to consume <laughs> that stuff, uh, would, be, would be okay. Uh, you could use walnut oil or any of this, and you put in the C60 that's been purified in particular uh, – in – maximal solution. So, so the technology is really simple. If you have one of those little magnetic stirrers that you can buy it, you know, on Amazon or, um, you know, sometimes, um, you'll see them on Craigslist even, and they just sit there and stir and stir and stir and stir based on a magnet spinning on a, on a motor. And you put a flask in there of pure oil, load up the top of the thing with a pure C60, put a cover on it, keep it out of the light, keep it away from moisture, and it'll eventually become super saturated. And then you can give that um, material to your six foot rat and see how you do. 
Yeah, I've, uh, you know, for a little while I had to fight the idea off that the conclusion of what might have been the CIA was secretly trying to kill me with C60, but I did overcome that fear and I'm going to expose my human rat body to, to the idea <laughs> and, and see, what, see, what, see what happens. Because it makes a lot of sense to me. I think there's a lot of um, beautiful uh, remedies for, in medicine and the, no, not to mention uh, the profound experience that might happen in, in the mindset of humanity as they realize that potentially 30 to 60 years of, of life can be added on to this already beautiful uh, place. It's often leading maybe potentially to a less anxious environment because people realize they have more time to accomplish the things that they desire in, in this lifespan. So that would be a great achievement, I think. And maybe we can take time to think about things longer too. Yeah. But, but also to your point about C60 and the CIA and stuff, C60 at the moment is, is quantified and qualified but we've been after it for millennia. Uh, C60 is at, at the core of all the alchemical experiments for the uh, rock of transformation, the philosopher's stone, whatever you want to call it, right? They were always trying to duplicate something that occurred way in the past, and that way in the past thing had been the accidental concentration of some C60 that made some people live an incredibly long period. Uh, long period. Hmm. Now, we get, if you strike a match, that, that the head of that match has C60 in it. True, it's an infinitesimal. It's like point, uh, zero, zero, uh, two, um, uh, percent uh, of that match head would be C60. So not harvestable or anything, but it naturally occurs in, when, you, when you've got a, a fire of any kind in burning carbon. So you burn a stick of wood, you're going to create C60 in the process. So we've had this stuff on the planet. It also can be found in... Uh, Sheologit, which is this compressed form of uh, fulvic minerals that comes from the Himalayas. And it can also be found in this rock called uh, Shungite. Now, in Shungite, it's concentrated for, for the Earth, but it's still only 1% or 2%. In order to have really good effect on you, you need pure C60 and some edible oils. The reason you need it in the edible oil form as opposed to water or something is that you want it, you want it to go through your liver. You want it to be processed by your liver and uh, first clean the toxins out there. And then the liver distributes the stuff basically through the blood system, distributes it to the rest of the body as it is required. And so uh, you get interesting effects. I mean, I've been around the, the self-experimenting six-foot rat community here for some <laughs> time. And uh, we'll get people that will uh, – we know, for instance, there's a threshold. So we know some interesting things about it. I'll, I'll diverge here for a second and go into some of the things I've learned about it. Please do. Um, it's best to take this stuff with, um, with something that creates hydrogen in the gut. Okay, So that could be as, as simple as eating an apple. All right, because an apple breaks down and causes all kinds of hydrogen uh, scrubbing bubbles to exist in your, your gut. And they help bind in and make the C60 that much better. You can also do the same thing by drinking whole milk kefir within a few minutes of the, um, of the C60. To a, a lesser extent, uh, it has been shown by the bodybuilding community that you can achieve the same thing with whey protein. Okay, the whey protein is way, it, it's much reduced over either the apple or the um, raw milk uh, kefir in terms of producing the required amount of hydrogen, but it's still better than nothing. Uh, some vegetables will do it if you got a particularly good batch of carrots that had a particular high level of um, kind of carbohydrate, they'll also do produce the hydrogen. And that really boosts the stuff up. And so some of the effects you might see are um, uh, weight loss. Um, because the, your body will become more efficient in dealing with the, uh, calories it needs. You won't have to eat so many calories in order to get the few out of there that your body needs. It'll be much more efficient in getting, uh, more calories out of less food and you'll be less hungry and you'll eat less and you'll start losing weight. There's also the effect of the toxins being taken out of your system at a cellular level, uh, is not as though they weigh anything per se, but they cause the body to start changing relative to the body mass index, you know, fat to uh, muscle mass uh, because of the buildup of toxins are frequent, frequently shielded by fat. And so the body will try and 
put some fat around uh, to protect itself from these toxins that are building up and all these uh, various different maladies that we suffer within our, our current um, just-in-time food system um, are, are reduced by it. And as a result of which, arthritic pain goes away. Uh, you know, people that uh, are old and have had knee pains that go back 5, 10 years find that within just a few weeks, the, the pain's gone. With or and pretty soon they don't even need the the allopathic um, pain deadening medications. We also see that the um, ability to transmit electricity through the nerves increases, so cognition becomes better. And people that are are uh, giving it to people that are, have dementia see noticeable results in three or four weeks as the brain fog starts lessening. Now the interesting thing about C60 is that it flushes out of your body maybe as rapidly as 24 hours, depending on how good your metabolism is. Mm -hmm. And so you, the idea is that you need to maintain a steady level of it within your system so that it'll build up in all of your cells. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. My way had been to just take a steady dose day after day after day after day. Uh, some people will find, they'll take a little bit and they'll see that it doesn't cause them any issues. It's just olive oil and C60 and you know you don't even know the C60 is there. And so the olive oil doesn't cause many problems. And so some people will will chug a whole bottle of the stuff in a relatively short period of time to try and get that saturation effect. And that's what you're after, right? But then once you've achieved it, even if you chug a whole bottle, your body will use it up real quickly and get rid of a lot of toxins and you'll excrete it. So you'll need to maintain a dose behind that. So either way, you get to the point where you reach a certain threshold of the C60 existing in your body. And then from that point on, all you have to do is to maintain that uh, mm -hmm. through, a, through a small daily dose that might be as little as a tablespoon or a teaspoon, depending on your body mass and so on. And the effects can be quite dramatic. Everything from you know alleviating uh, chronic pains to clearing brain fog, lots of reports of people getting a better vision you know, doing away with reading glasses and these kind of things as the uh, C60 begins removing the toxins that are actually the root cause for a lot of the symptomatic ills that we put down to disease. And this apparently also um, comes into play with such diseases as um, multiple sclerosis, okay? which is a, a form of scarring, basically, that does away with the um, nerve sheath that is actually the conductor of the electricity within our brains and our bodies. And so there have been some rather dramatic results reported with people that had MS that were taking C60. So, so truly re remarkable stuff. Of course, none of it sanct you know, is sanctified by any organization anywhere. And so consequently, it's probably illegal to even discuss it this way. But, you know, if a human were to take it, then some of these benefits could could be anticipated, even though no government saying it's allowed or should be taking, taken. And in fact, you must should go into it knowing that C60, which is the residue you could get out of a campfire or off of a match, is also an industrial chemical that they use for lubrication. And so you're, you're consuming an industrial <laughs> chemical <laughs> or giving it to your six foot rat to see how long you can make that rat last. Yeah, no, this message is not approved by the FDA. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Exactly so. <laughs> this is not meant for human consumption. <laughs> right. Only six foot rats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If right. you're willing to experiment. No, I think it's bewildering to, to think about it. I'm really excited to try the experiment out on myself. Obviously, the best way to do it um, is to, to build your own experience and your own understanding of life. It helps with critical thinking. Um, and, and I'm really interested to see... Uh, the benefits on someone who's fairly healthy. I'm quite a young man. Uh, and again, I think the, the original way that you're speaking about the more Ayurvedic sense of uh, that repetitious slow buildup is probably more functional than that, that snapback. So to continually take it on a, on a daily basis um, at, at slow doses, you might, you might see these dramatic effects like you're talking about. Um, and again, just to reiterate that because it is a, an industrial solvent, this is why they were trying to kill the rats with it in the first place, was that it's part of um, a requirement. It was a lethal dose study. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. LD50 study on, on the rats to see how much of this industrial solvent the rats would have to take. No, it's an industrial put, lubricant, not oh, a solvent. A lubricant, sorry, um, yeah. which I guess would make sense having that nice round edge of uh, the multi-pointed circle. Um, so and the fact that it doesn't crush. Oh, you, you can't know, crush in, it. 
because it's molecular. Ah. So the so the so the wire frame component in an industrial uh, use with lots of the others, they're all rolling together around and it forms just an amazing lubricant. And it's because the individual atoms don't really crush down. Oh. Because of the shape of the of the soccer ball wire frame being, you know, reinforcing. So it's just really cool, even at that level. Yes, yeah, so, uh, the world has always managed to to blow my mind. Um, 